hope everybody's doing well. This is Dave here for What Does Dave Think? And tonight, let's have a little chat about some of the things that's gone on in the past week, um, week, week and a half or so. And for those that are keeping up with things, we have Microsoft Ignite this week. We have the Microsoft Surface event, which really doesn't look to be a big surprise. Um, We'll have to wait and see. Some of the leaks that have come out have been kind of, um, I'm going to say they're downers. You know, that they really are. They're, they're, they're downers. And But the big thing I want to focus on tonight, and I realize that was kind of a bad segue, but that's really all we can say right now about the Microsoft Surface announcement. I really don't want to get into the rumor mill too much. Um... Stadia, Google's game streaming service. It announced they are refunding all purchases. Basically, all hardware, all software are, are being refunded. And they're closing the service down and they hope to have everything closed down by mid-January 2023. And the Stadia platform, they're hoping that it can be used for other purposes, you know, maybe other types of software, maybe they can, you know, other companies can use it, but the technology that built the platform that we call Stadia will continue to exist. But where did Stadia go wrong? That's kind of what I want to talk about tonight. Where did Stadia go wrong? Well, this is kind of an opinion here, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump out and say it. I think Stadia went wrong right from the get-go. And keep in mind, I'm an avid gamer. I like to game regularly. Uh, I keep up with technology news regularly. And I've gamed on virtually every platform available from... Sony, PlayStation, Xbox, PC, even Mac, tablet, and phone. Stadia was appealing to me when it first came out. The model in which it ran from a business perspective pushed me right away from it and right out the door. Because in order to play a game on Stadia, you had to buy it on Stadia. You could not bring games into Stadia. You could also not take games outside of Stadia. So you could have a big Steam library of games you've bought, you know, in the last 10 years. Up, oh, can't bring those to Stadia. You had to repurchase everything you wanted to play and play it only on Stadia with your Stadia friends for the most part. Now, that made no sense to me. That was the way the ecosystem operated. And even if some gamer wanted to buy into that system and play their games on their phone, you know, or their PC or their Ultrabook when they're on the road, their tablet, their 4G, 5G LTE connection, great. Go get the, you know, the, the service was good for that. The pricing was fair. I mean, you still had a monthly subscription for Stadia Pro. I believe it was $11.99. Don't quote me on that. And supposedly at times you got free games once a month. And that's all well and good. But a lot of times when you saw those free games, I'd never heard of the titles. Never heard of them. 
And, and you know, I, I believe in fully supporting independent developers. The ones that are sitting in rooms like this one, you know, putting their heart and soul into their title and their development work. I fully believe in supporting those people. But you have to give a name brand title or a at least a B-class title once in a while. You know, I don't expect the Battlefields or the Call of Duties or, you know, anything like that to be free. Maybe the over. Maybe the Battlefield 3, the Battlefield 4s, you know, the, the older Call of Duties, the remasters. You know, maybe you could have thrown some of those in there. And that kind of takes me to, to, the, to the other point of where Stadia failed. The game catalog. They didn't have a lot of AAA titles. There were no Call of Duties, no Battlefields. I did see Madden on there a few times. I did see um, NBA 2K. Of course, you know, you had the Fortnites and the PUBGs and... You know, stuff like that. But the bust out big AAA titles, you didn't see. You know, it would have been nice to see an Insurgency Sandstorm. You know, that would have been a good follow-up. If you, if you couldn't get the Call of Duties, you couldn't get the Battlefields. The selection left so much to be desired. Now, when you factor in the selection and the business model... Of having to buy my own games then hey I'm not so sure I'm interested in this deal and that's kind of where things fail Google is known and has a history of dumping products that don't meet expectations now what those expectations are for each product who knows you know, sometimes Google dumps things like it's going out of style. I'm gonna, I'm gonna call it, I'm gonna call it what it is. And you know that they, they rebrand things such as Google Duo becoming Google Meet, and sometimes they make things more confusing. But this whole Google Stadia thing just never did jive. You had to pair it. I don't want to go into great details uh, in. in now because it's relevant when you wanted to you know put it on your tv so you could stream you had to go through you had to get your phone you had to pair it up with your chromecast first generation chromecast not the new one supporting google tv you had to do it on your phone pair it up shake your leg wave your hand and then maybe you could play Maybe you could play now, you know, could you play on your phone easily? Yes. When Apple started allowing streaming services, could you, you know, play that way? Yes. Could you play on a Google tablet? Of course. But again, you want to play it on Google Stadia? You had to buy a copy of the game, even if you already own it. And from what I've heard, developers kind of got the short end of the straw too. Google just kind of announced, hey, Stadia's done. We didn't tell the devs first. So, you know, devs have got games that were coming out that week, coming out the next day, coming out now. Are they getting paid for those games? They don't know. They don't know. Now... GE Force Now and Xbox Cloud Gaming, I'm sure, had a lot to do with putting pressure on Stadia. They're completely different services, ran a completely different way, completely different ecosystems, and, and, and that's appropriate for maybe the next video here on the channel. But it's hard to ask a gamer, number one, 
to enter an ecosystem with no content and automatically have to make purchases. If they just said, hey, bring your Steam library with you, or hey, you're gonna have to make purchases, but we'll honor five games, or we'll give you a discount, something to entice the gamer. You've always got to be able to entice the consumer to your services. Discounts, free services, free games, something. It didn't happen. When somebody signed up for Stadia, they automatically, unless they wanted to play the freebies, were going to have to purchase a game out of pocket, even if they already own it. So now, will another step, an another game streaming company come out and, and and join in? I don't know. I'm going to be doing more videos and more write-ups on game streaming. I have a big interest in game streaming, and there's a lot more to talk about than just the Stadia business model and you know Stadia closing down and why Stadia failed and, you know, didn't succeed. There's a lot more to talk about in cloud gaming. And I really want to do that. So I hope everybody's doing well. I hope everybody that was on Stadia is getting their refunds. When you start getting your refunds, how about drop me a comment down below? I would like to know that Google's following through with what they said. How long are these refunds taking? Are you getting your full refund? Are they getting it right the first time? Are you having to contact support? And for the folks that were on Stadia, what are your thoughts of it closing down? You know, what were the good, what were the bad? Give me your opinion, drop it down below. I appreciate it folks, and we will see you next time. This is Dave for Dave's Minute. I'm out.